the old days, it used to be called Lod Airport because that was Lida. Where the airport is outside of Tel Aviv is actually Lida, uh, Lod, uh, according in, in Hebrew, L-O-D. That was Lod Airport. Uh, it'd be nice to go back, get Ben Gurion's name out, all, out, off it, you know. But we can't get Kennedy's name out off the Space Center, or we can't go back to Idlewild Airport in Manhattan. You guys remember the days when Kennedy Airport was known as Idlewild? Well, nobody calls it Idlewild anymore. Although I thought that was a nice name. Now Idlewild, I think, is up here in the hills, in uh, <laughs> near Palm Springs or someplace. But it used to be the airport of New York. Uh, uh, ben Gurion used to be called Ludd Airport. And that is Lida. Uh, Lida is more poetic. It's the Greek version. Okie dokie. So Peter is on his way and uh, to Lida and Jaffa. And Jaffa is Tel Aviv today. Uh, this is, uh, see this on there? Oh, here's Tel Aviv, which is a Jewish city, meaning a hill of spring. But the city next to it, the old city that's in the New Testament, and it was Jaffa or Jaffa or Jaffa or whatever they call it. And see, they are next to each other. See? Right? We're getting ready for what's going to happen in Jaffa. Peter's vision on the rooftop. That's all that really matters in Jaffa. Are you guys following me or have I lost you all? No, you're okay? Okay. We're going slow, but why, why go fast? This is an important material sort out. So, and the disciples heard, though this is accurate, someone knows this stuff here. But I would parallel this in my work in the Josephus that around this time disputes were breaking out between Jews and Samaritans. And since Lydda, Lod, is an area between the two areas somewhat, or at the, at the borders of the two Judea and Samaria areas, a lot of the conflicting uh, took place there. And in Josephus at this time, in the 40s, Roman governors are taking vengeance on the different groups here. I, I forget exactly, but you can read your Josephus if you have it. It's in the Antiquities and the war. But the Roman governors, including Felix, who's going to appear here, uh, finally rounds up the ringleaders, particularly after the Stephen, uh, the Roman emperor's servant who's beaten by Jewish crowds and then causes disturbances uh, all over the country there. They crucified a lot of people at Lydda. Uh, revolutionaries, troublemakers, uh, probably messianic individuals, maybe even a Samaritan messiah. I think this Dositheus, this other one, this companion of, of uh, the, the Samaritan Messiah here was called the Tahe. Um, I forget what it means, but in, in Semitic language, but it has to do with the Redeemer. And it's a, a figure in Samaritan literature, and that's another good topic if someone wants to do an interesting paper, go find the Tahe, what it's all about. Because I think that a lot of Taheb materials have s leaked into these materials here. Um, in any case, we get the Roman governors, Pilate, one thing they know about Pilate in the received Josephus, they don't know about him killing anyone called Jesus as such, but they do have, uh, at least not in the uh, war, and. The Antiquities is not considered a reliable testimony. They do have him <coughs> butchering a person who looks very much like the Tah mm -hmm. and crucifying people in Samaria mercilessly. So for all people who think that Pontius Pilate is a gentle fellow, look at what he did in Samaria to, um, to unrest there. He's a vicious, brutal cur, uh, Mel Gibson notwithstanding bloodthirsty, uh, one of the worst kind of public officials. And he's followed by a series of other governors, and all, a lot of the troubles are in this Lydda area. Now, that's what caught me up here. So Peter is, let's see, in 
where was he? Is he in Jaffa or is he in Lydda? Oh, he comes to a certain disciple at Jaffa <clears throat> called Tabitha, which means Dorcas. Now, I know we all think of Tabitha Pussycat and stuff like that, but I think this is complicated, and I'm not sure I can sort it all out for you, but I can give you a little hint of what's going on here. I think, anyway. Some materials have Doetus instead of Dorcas, or some materials have Dorcas in Josephus instead of Doetus, Dositheus, who's one of the people crucified, probably, in these unrest between Samaritans and Jews and Josephus at this point. I think that is where the Dorcas comes from here. I know this is tough to follow. Line 36 of chapter 9. Now, Tabitha, <laughs> I think, is do in Hebrew or Aramaic. And Dorcas is supposed to be do, female deer in Greek. That is supposed to be the relationship of the two names. That's why they have that. But I think, in fact, that's just the surface here. Beneath it is this crucifixion of Doetus, Dositus, Dorcas. Okay. At Lydda. Well, whatever it is, notice she's bathed. There's some bathing here going on. That may or may not be important. So, since Lydda was near Jaffa, where Peter was, two men were sent, and Peter rose up. They go into an upper room. Sounds familiar, going into upper rooms. And there was Dorcas lying down, and so then Peter does a resurrection. Uh, Tabitha Kumi is the usual thing you hear. Tabitha, get up! I don't know where all that comes from, except Tabitha is the word in for do. It may be another Arabic word as well there, or, or gazelle. Anyway, uh, whatever. So Peter does a resurrection. That, that's action. That's the Gospels Acts. You usually have some miraculous thing covering up some other thing that's going on here. Now, you can take the miraculous thing and no cover up if you prefer. Uh, again, I'm the cynic. You don't have to. To my mind, these things don't happen. If you think they do happen, that's fine, then they don't. But the writers of Acts are living in a different universe, to my mind, a Hollywood universe.